Hi fifth graders, it's Mrs. Nobby here at Addison for a quick review on the classification of plants. So remember, the plant kingdom can be broken down into vascular plants and non-vascular plants. The non-vascular, we'll see in a minute, they're the shorter ones that don't have a vascular system, don't make them grow tall. The vascular plants have the xylem and the phloem that help get nutrients up high. Now one example we used when we took our walk around Addison was our pear tree. Pears, pear tree, is a great example of an angiosperm, which is a vascular plant. So remember, a pear tree is a vascular plant, and we can break vascular plants down into angiosperms and gymnosperms, seed-bearing plants, and also plants that bear spores. This one is a flowering plant. And in the spring, about a month ago, it was covered with flowers. Pollinators visited it, and now every flower that was pollinated withered, and there's a pear growing behind it. Remember, angiosperm means flowering plant. Their fruits are covering the seeds. It also means covered seeds. Remember, we split a pear open in the fall when we were doing our walk, and you could see the seeds of the pear. On our walk for our vascular plant, we used the dogwood. I believe Miss Rooney and Miss O'Donnell were here during some of our walks, and they talked about the berry on the dogwood, which now, since we're in a different season, we have remnants of flowers. So this is an angiosperm. It's a flowering plant, but it's definitely a vascular plant. It grows tall. It has roots that bring up the water, xylem all through the stem that bring up the water, nutrients to the leaves, the leaves make the food, and the phloem bring it back, bring the food back down to the rest of the plant. The fact that this tree has those tubes that bring up the water and bring down the food make it a vascular plant. Remember our example of non-vascular plant was moss. We looked at it up close and discovered it doesn't have any vascular tubes like vascular plants. It absorbs water cell to cell. So it has root-like structures, stem-like structures, and leaf-like structures, but they don't function like true root stems and leaves. They just absorb water and nutrients from cell to cell called osmosis. Non-vascular plants like moss can never grow as tall as vascular plants, such as the pine tree, which is a gymnosperm, right behind me. I'm here at a pine tree and I'm so excited because in the fall when we did our walk, we couldn't actually see a male pine cone and compare it to a female pine cone. Now it's spring and I have a great example of a gymnosperm with a little tiny male pine cone on the end. These are the cones that release all that pollen in the spring and make us cough and sneeze and hurt our eyes. The females are much bigger and they last at least for a year. The seeds are inside the female and they are not covered and that's why they're a gymnosperm, which means non-covered or naked seeds. Don't confuse the male pine cone for the new growth on the pine tree, which comes out in the spring and looks like little candles all over the pine tree. Remember the two types of vascular plants that we covered were gymnosperms, which means seeds that are not covered, and angiosperms, like the pear tree, with the pears that has covered seed, it's covered with a fruit. Remember the other thing we did about plants in the science lab was we built a vascular tree out of all of you. We had heartwood that stood strong in the middle. We had roots, tap roots, and a network of roots that brought up the water. The xylem tubes brought it all the way up to the leaves. The leaves made food, woo, and the phloem tubes brought down the food, woo. The bark was protective of the whole tree, and the boring beetles tried to get in. It was a great day in the science lab, great review of vascular plants. Bye fifth graders, I sure miss you. I'll be back in a couple weeks to review plant and animal cells with you. Take care.